To the crisis at the southern border and the limbo in Congress as the GOP is threatening to shut the government down unless Democrats agree to their demands ahead of January 19th deadline to fund the government. So what comes next? Joining us now is the chair of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, Congresswoman Nanette Baragan. Thank you so much for your time tonight, Congresswoman. Uh, we saw the Speaker of the House at the border yesterday. Speaker Johnson called this a, quote, disaster of the president's own design. Biden, in turn, has accused Republicans of politicizing the funding he needs to help improve the situation. It's a divided government, of course, so compromise is necessary. In your mind, what's the path forward here? Well, first of all, I don't think Republicans have much of an interest in really fixing and helping along the southern border. Uh, they want to make this uh, political football. They have been doing that. Uh, we need to come together and we need to, number one, have a real conversation about how to address the border, which includes not just funding on the border, but comprehensive immigration policy changes. And those are not changes uh, that they really want to make. Uh, what we've heard thus far uh, is the hijacking of Ukraine uh, funding and funding for our allies. And that is to end asylum as we know it. And that is the concern that I have. You've criticized President Biden for considering tighter restrictions at the southern border to help win GOP support for Ukraine and Israel aid. In your mind, is the border not a place to compromise? There, the issue is not whether you're going to compromise on the border. Everybody's open to compromise. The issue on that is that we should not be tying necessary critical foreign aid money that's going to our allies uh, to save uh, and help our Democratic allies um, in exchange for giving up extreme border policy changes. Those should be happening in different conversations. So are we willing to compromise? Absolutely. Are we willing to have a, a sit down and have tough conversations about changing immigration policy? Absolutely. That is not what is transpiring, and that is not what Republicans want. Again, we are at, in an election year. They want this to continue. And let's not forget, uh, the infrastructure investment that needs to be done has not been made, and Republicans don't support it, to make sure that there's enough immigration judges so that we don't see it take four years, which is what it's taking for an asylum case to be heard. If they're willing to put the money in there, uh, they would see and we could uh, implement a system where asylum cases are heard much quicker and it would not give as much of incentive for people to make the journey and to say, well, I'm going to have years and years on end before my case is heard. Similarly, there are got a lot of games at play where you have southern governors who continue to send migrants to major cities like New York and Chicago. In turn, as those cities start to make it more challenging for buses to show up, migrants are ending up in smaller communities near those major cities. Those places are starting to try to ban migrants from showing up. Political stunts aside, should all 50 states have to shoulder the burden of this influx of migrants at the southern border? I believe there should be a network set up and a system set up so that any state can handle migrants and welcome them into um, our cities and our communities. Uh, we are a nation of immigrants and they have a lot of value. And with worker shortage issues, there's a lot of benefit. My own parents were immigrants um, that came from Mexico. But we need to be able to help fund uh, the cities and to give them dollars to be able to welcome and have programs in place. But Congress has to do its job and it has to help provide this shelter money to cities. And that is part of what the president has asked for, which our Republican colleagues have said no. And New York City Mayor Eric Adams, as you know, is suing the charter bus company that brought migrants to New York City. He's asking for more than $700 million to cover the cost of care. Should private companies be responsible for this? Uh, you know, that's something we haven't really looked at. Uh, but, you know, across the country, when you take a, 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 take a look at uh, the workforce and you talk to companies that need that workforce you know i think that the the we have had um companies stepping up to say you know that they support immigration and they support uh, everything from daca and and that's a good thing i think there congress has to start by doing its job and there hasn't been any comprehensive immigration reform done in a very long time and that's part of this problem so i would start with congress doing its job and that requires uh, two parties and requires Republicans to come to the table. California Democratic Congresswoman Nanette Baragan, we thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Great. Thank you. 
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.